Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. Luke Simons, like diamonds. What's up, dude? Not much. Is ready to talk about boats. A lot of questions coming in, and uh, this it's been a, a crazy market. So we thought we'd do some do some chatter about it. Yeah. So is now, right now, the worst time in history to buy a boat? That's the big question. You know, in our community, we have a private insider community now, about 30,000 members in there. And the question comes up a lot. A lot of people buying boats, including the two of us. I mean, bought a boat here recently. And I remember what that's a little over a year ago. Time's flying. Yeah. It was, yeah so it was uh, November before last. So a little bit over a year now and time's flying. Uh, and yeah, we were thinking, oh man, like we were buying at a bad time. Yeah. And, and we had people then tell us that was the worst time to buy a boat. Oh, there's going to just, just you wait, you know, cause that was in 2019, we were saving up for this boat and just you wait, there's going to be so many boats out on the market, you know, cause ever, the recession's going to come and all of a sudden everyone's going to be selling them. And, uh, it, and now here we are year, year and a half later and boat sales are still out of the roof. The only bad news is these manufacturers can't keep up. They're still backlogged from like a year ago. And uh, we debated having a manufacturer on here. Uh, but of course, they're always going to say it's the best time to, to, buy, a, to buy a boat. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It's, it's just such a, I wish I had a, a great answer. I, I, I will say, I don't know that there's ever a best or worst time uh, to buy anything. I remember even going back to my my very first house I bought right before the big housing bubble. And, and and looking back, that probably was one of the worst times ever to buy the house. But had I just waited it out, now that same house is worth like three times what I paid for it, you know, uh, in 2005. Uh, it's nuts because that area, of, it was in Atlanta, Georgia at the time, has exploded. And so it's also like, all right, what's you know, how much time do you have, right? It, you know, how long can you hold on to something? I do think this whole buying a boat and selling it for a crazy profit, like I guarantee we could sell our Pathfinder now for more than we paid for it. Yeah, but that's a rarity, right? That was right. A, but I'm saying crazy. that's going away. I think that that can't last forever. That that's like a sign of a bubble that has to end. Uh, that to me, that part is absolutely crazy. It just doesn't make sense. You, you should never be able to, I should never be able to. It's, it's very, very odd when you could buy a car or a boat and use and abuse it in saltwater, for instance, and then a year or even two later, sell it for more than you paid for it. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah, I don't know if we actually be able to do that or not, but, but either way, the, the, the market has definitely been crazy. I think I have to imagine, it seems like now we got past the summer. Last summer, I have to imagine, was probably the craziest boat sales ever. And, uh, and, and now I'm seeing, even just looking at used boats, it's just fun to go see what's on the market. And so I do this every once in a while. And I, I've at least noticed a, a downtick in, in the amount of boats that are, that when I see the price, I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody's going to pay it. And then somebody does like, you know, a while back. And now I'm starting to see at least the, the used boat market prices seem to get a little bit, a little bit more back to normal. Um, but again, that's just from, from uh, just some casual glances at the, uh, at the online sites. Yeah. I, I think the ultimate answer is if you're, if you're going to use a boat, Right. And, and that's always the toughest part. So many people buy boats and they don't use them enough, which is why a lot of them get sold. But if you're truly just like buying a house, if you're truly going to use it and it's not there just so you can flip it and try to make a buck and you're in it for the long term, then I, I always think it's a great it's a great idea. It's a great investment. Uh, if you're hoping and praying, oh, man, this is going to be something I hold on for a year or two and then flip it for what I paid for it or more, because that's what's happened the last two years. I, I don't, I think that's a horrible idea. Uh, same with the house right now. I'd be super nervous because it's weird, right? I mean, we have, you know, interest rates is a big deal, right? Interest rates are gone up a bunch just in the past four, four months, really. And that's a big deal because most the average person is financing, you know, their, their boat. And if all of a sudden interest rates going up, I mean, that payments are going up. And I think at some point, if interest rates keep going up, it's what can destroy the housing market and, and also, you know, even, even boat sales. Craziest thing, you know, we were talking with old Hollywood about this and, uh, and our dad just bought a boat here in the, in the last, uh, what, six, seven months. And uh, they called our dad's name's Larry and the, 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 my dad had put, you know, the, the money down for it and called up my dad and like, um, hey, Mr. Simons. I got some good news and bad news. Uh, 
the good news is your your boat arrived here, got delivered today. And he's like, that's great. What's the bad news? Like, well, bad news, there's no engine on it. My dad's like, didn't I pay for an engine? Like, yes, yes, sir. You paid for an engine. He's like, well, uh, why isn't there an engine on it? He's like, I, I don't know. A lot of boats are just showing a lot of engines on it. And like, what? Well, what do you suppose we do here? He's like, oh, you could wait it out. Might take us three months to get a get a new Yamaha 200 on this, or uh, you know, we can give your money back and you can keep looking elsewhere. And uh, and my dad did. He's like, give him my money back. I'm gonna go find an, a boat with an engine. But Hollywood was telling us, you know, Wells Fargo controls like 70 plus percent of of most of the financing for for boats for the marine industry and now they're having to create a separate division basically a separate loan you have to buy two loans now which is not good for the consumer right because you have you have fees you have to do to start up each one and obviously two interest rates so you have one loan for the actual boat because you can buy a boat now without a motor because prior they wouldn't let the loan wouldn't let allow you to have a boat without the engine on it if you're buying a new one and so now there's like two different loans whole thing's absolutely crazy here's what i think is the worst part about this whole process this whole sales process And, and if you've bought anything new bought a new vehicle for my wife there is, it's, it's frustrating in terms of salesmanship. I came from the sales side of things, as many of you know, I, I think it's a, it's an art and the last two years, it's been a lost art. And what I mean is there's no negotiating. They could care less if you're happy or not. They could care less if you got your power pole you asked for. They could care less if you got the trauma mode. They could care less if things don't work. If batteries aren't there, they could care less they it's just like yeah if you don't want it i got someone else who wants it right like oh yeah yeah if you don't want it um you know someone else will take it go find your own motor it's just it's crazy my my buddy kyle he was in the market for a new um uh what are they called the a ranger you know a little four-wheel drive little little ranger and called up the i won't name the the company but big company and the sales guy was just like literally finally just said hey i don't have time for this like he was asking questions about this ranger and he's literally says hey uh kyle I, i'm sorry but man i don't have time i got three people who want this do you want it or not he literally said that to him and like this is some young punk sales guy who's never learned how to sell before in his life and he's gonna have a rude awakening when all of a sudden this does change because it will at some point nothing goes up like just forever and uh and kyle's just like tail between his legs because he's the only one he could find he's like okay i'll take it and uh no negotiating so for the manufacturers they're loving this right uh you know even talking to to chevy we got some friends here at chevrolet and they have their absolute best year in terms of like total profit ever even though half the year they didn't have vehicles in the in the lot it's because they don't have to get any more any more rebates. There's no more negotiating. There's no more. Hey, let's take a thousand bucks off. Uh, it's like here's what we got. Uh, if anything, they're charging more for the same stuff. So I I do think that will change here in somewhere near near future. I just don't know when. Right? We were we were talking about that a year ago ourselves after we got our boat. Oh yeah, at some point there's going to be a tons of used boats in the market, and there it just hasn't happened yet. So uh, I, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Because uh, this is not a, a, a sermon by any means. This is more of a conversation we, we hear about all the time. And people ask us, and I, I don't want to be the person that says, oh, yeah, you should go all in. This is the best time ever to buy a boat. And I, same point, I, I, I would have I been mad if a year ago I told someone or, you know, I, if they looked to me for advice and said, oh, man, it's about to tank any minute now. And here we are a year later and things are still going up. It's still well, tough to find anything. But you mentioned before people buying a boat to try to make money off of it from the price, like price escalation. I think that would be, a, granted, this is not meant to be investment advice at all. We are not <laughs> investment professionals. <laughs> I'll throw that caveat out there. <laughs> but to me, it seems like it would be a big mistake to buy a boat to try to flip it and make profit, unless you're doing some big refurbs to it. But just to hold it and, and use it for a little bit and then flip it. For profit the odds of that happening are very very small so let's and, let's uh, all agree that that's a very like that you shouldn't do that that's just dumb yeah that's and, not not a smart move but um, but the next thing though luke is no one likes a bad deal no one wants to feel like they got a bad deal and the, what i think the fear is and, and we hear it from some of the questions we get is all right let's just say i'm going to buy the boat for fifty thousand dollars so I'm going to buy this boat. It's a 50 today. There's no discounts because there's no, no rebates. No one wants to get negotiate because they don't have to. And then all of a sudden the market falls out 
and those people are now are dying to sell that boat for 42,000 or 40, whatever the number is. That's, that's what people don't want is to buy something, get stuck with it. And, and then feel like, I mean, I got a bad deal. Like I could have just waited three more months and I could have got it for 42 instead of 50. I think that that's, that's kind of the fear, but I, no one knows. Yeah. That's the, I mean, that's the um, total unknown. I mean, it basically just with the market, right. It's the prices are the prices as of today, they could go higher. They, they could get better. They could get worse tomorrow. We never really know. And to me, it, it's, it really should come down to how much are you going to use it? Right. So if, if you're going to buy it and use it once or twice a month and then hope you make money on it later, very bad idea in my opinion. If you're going to, if you just love fishing, you, you want to have a, uh, something fun to do for you and the family or the weekends, you're going to be using it like once a week on average or even more, then probably a good idea. Even, even if the, you could have gotten a better price later, you've had so much fun in the meantime where it's yeah. okay, it's cool. It's, it was a risk. Um, could have been better, but hey, you had a ton of fun. And and I think the it's really about how much you use it. I almost, I almost think you have to go into it uh, just expecting to for it to be a bad financial decision, <laughs> but it, it's just how much fun you're going to have with it. Like how many good memories are you going to create? That should be what the purchase should be for, not not trying to, certainly not trying to make money. And, and just, you know, if it does, take the market has to go down at some point, it's a matter of when. I thought it would already happen. Um, so I was already wrong. So I can't, uh, sit here and give it a projection because <laughs> I have no leg to stand on, but, um, for me, it's about using it, right. It just needs to be the point where, okay, like I, even if it does go down, I use it so much and I had so many great memories with friends and family that, okay, it, it's fine. It's a, it's a write-off. Yeah. It's, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to comment in a second about when I believe the market could go down, uh, just we were in the financial service industry and, and I studied that and read up on it like crazy and we had to make bets on, on it. And um, I'll talk about that in a second. But I what you just said is the most important part. And it was the same, you know, for my wife and I looking at this house we were going to buy on the lake. It was way over our budget. But it was and my buddy Chris he happened to call me that day just to check in. You know about uh, we even look at the house and I kind of mentioned to him, we see a real estate agent and um, and he, he's like, man, he's like, you have to go in not caring if it's going to go up or down anytime soon. Just assume it stays even for 30 years. Is this a place you could create amazing memories with with your three kids and your and your spouse? And he's like, if it's going to upgrade and you could afford it, if it's going to upgrade your memories and the cool stuff you could do. And if you guys friends with me on Facebook, you see the stuff like my oldest daughter is doing, finding new pets and lizards and turtles and snakes and gators and stuff every weekend, then do it. And we did. And it was the best decision ever. And then that was another one, right? Like, you know, we, we only bought a year or so ago. And at the time, everyone's like, oh man, the market's going to tank any second. Real estate's going to collapse. And it's still going up as we're recording this. But back to the so do it for the memories, right? And, and even with Saltstrong, we say we're in the memory creating business. You know, we're a fishing club, but end of the day, what gets our juices flowing are the memories, right? In our community, we see them every day and we get emails, like private emails from moms and dads and grandparents and, and, and just like the smiles and the pictures that they send. That's it, right? We're in the memory creating business. And, uh, and that's really what's so special about, about fishing and, and just boating is, uh, as well. Even some of the days that we didn't catch fish, just being out on the boat and some of the funny things that are happening are some of the, the best memories. Um, so do it for the memories. Flipping yeah. back, speaking of flipping, back to the uh, investment side of things. So back when we were in the annuity business, annuities are all based on, on bonds. So you're constantly looking really at the 10 year was the, the main, the main one we looked at, but we're always looking at, at the yield at the different yields that bonds were, were doing. And right now there it just happened here recently, first time in a while, an inverted yield curve. And what that means in layman's terms is that if Luke had $10,000, he would get a better interest rate. He would actually make more money by investing in like a two year. I'm just giving you an example, a two year bond versus like a 15 or 30 or something that's longer out, which doesn't make sense, right? You think, man, if I'm going to have my money held up, right? For 30 years, I should get a better interest rate, which is normally the case. And it just went inverted, which really just means that the, the traders and really everyone who's making all the things happen behind the scenes and in, uh, in, in, our, in our bond market, 
are thinking that the the future is not so bright basically he's putting this in layman's terms like they're fearful that it might not be as good and now it has been inverted so the yield curve is inverted what that meant back when we were in financial services once again we're not financial advisors anymore don't have any licenses and and don't listen to anything we say in terms of uh making investment advice but when that happened it was at the at the time it was 100 percent of the time now with all the stimulus it's changed a little bit but at the time 100 percent of the time that the 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 yield curve went inverted a recession happened anywhere from eight to 18 months it was usually in that 12 to 16 month range and that's pretty telling like it was literally automatic and guess what happened in 2006 2007 that was when the first time it happened and uh in in, in the basically 2000s and guess what happened within 18 months the whole market absolutely collapsed and started a recession. So just throwing out there, uh, do your own research on it, but inverted yield curve, and who knows these days, we've printed off so much money, we've done so many cuckoo things in the government, who who knows what uh, if that really means what it used to mean, but that was, anytime I see that, because uh, I'm constantly just kind of looking at it, I think just from habit, I'm like, oh boy, uh, that's not good news. Uh, if anything, it's just something's whacked that uh that it's doing that so and i don't even know what that means for boat sales but (laughs) but i i I would i would be a little bit more hesitant on that uh anytime you see and and it just makes sense right what what's going on that the yield curve is inverted where someone can make more money on a let's just say a two or one year bond than a than a 5 10 15 or, or 30 very very odd yeah, and so I mean, if that was the case, then you know, if if there is going to be a downturn, which again, we we're two just fishing knuckleheads, we don't know. Um, that would make more sense to to maybe wait or, or even get like a, a smaller boat or something that um, you know you really want to get out there, but you uh, you can lessen your risk by getting a smaller, less expensive boat. My, my thought again, I've I've always been wrong. I've been wrong for the past year, but my thought is just with how many boats have been sold, I would imagine that the used boat market is going to be just really saturated, but it hasn't happened yet. And so mm-hmm. maybe it won't because so many people bought boats. Eventually there's going to be a lot of people start just looking at their, their bank accounts, seeing all the extra expenditures from storing it and, and all that stuff. Uh, but it hadn't happened yet. So maybe it won't. I, I really don't know. Yeah. And, and that's where it's hurting people the most. It's not the cost of the boat. It's all the other stuff. It's the gas. I mean, gas obviously is skyrocketed. And especially if you're having to fill up like at a marina or if you have to store it at a marina, all these marinas and these dry, I mean, dry storage, like if you want anything that's covered, remember when we were looking for the, just to store the stupid trailer, it was, it was obscene. It was like $150 a month outside and basically a parking lot a month just to store a trailer. I mean, back in the day, that was like 10, I just throw me 10 bucks. No, more than that, though. But there was a, a waiting list to even have the opportunity to pay yes. that much money. Every place around here was totally slammed. It was insane. And I don't know if it's still like that or not, but uh, I mean, who would have guessed? It's crazy. Yeah. And so boat sales are up from what we read in the National Maritime, whatever it is. Um, it's about 13% year over year. I mean, from last year and last year was massive. And a lot of that was, you know, I I don't know how they calculate it. You know, I assume it's when it gets delivered. So there were so many pending orders. So many, it was such such a big backlog that they were having to fill a lot of these things. Um, but still that, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big increase. And, uh, and now at a, I don't know if it's an all time high, but I think I said what 13 or 14 year high for uh, overall boat sales in terms of actual, uh, people, uh, buying new boats, um, pretty, uh, pretty wild and, and used boats, but meaning anything that happened at the, the dealer level, uh, not just, you know, transactions on Facebook marketplace for a small John boat or something like that. It doesn't seem like that, uh, that's counting in what we read, but, uh, super fascinating. And uh, I think the the final answer, if you're waiting for us to come up with some final answer, is just that, is do it for the memories and just assume you're going to spend way more money than you thought you would, because you will, and uh, and just assume that you're going to have some of the best times of your life in it, because you will, if you use it. Because that's, that's the number one problem, is people buy it, they have all these dreams that, oh, we're going to use it every weekend, and then life gets in the way, and you stop using it, and it just sits on a trailer and collects spiders and rats and then they start eating your wires next thing you know you're yelling at your wife no boy (laughs) 
That sounds like a personal problem there. <laughs> and I, I'll, I'll go the other way is like why you should not buy it, right? And, and it's, I would say don't buy it if you're, you know, kind of new to fishing and, and, and you're thinking, oh, if only I had a boat, I'd be able to go catch those big fish, whether it's a redfish or a snook or trout or flounder. That's a mistake. Uh, the, the benefit, uh, just a huge, a huge benefit of inshore saltwater fishing is that a lot of the biggest fish go up in shallow water to feed. And so you have access to really good fish without a boat at all. You can get a pair of wading boots. And in many cases, like Wader Dave is a great example. Yep. I see him all the time. I fish with him multiple times. He's always catching big fish. He, he actually, he has a boat, but he prefers to wade fish. because I think he's, so I heard he sold it. Oh, did he sell it? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. But, uh, but all of his fit, all of his pictures, I don't think I've ever seen a picture with him holding the fish in a boat. And he, he gets a lot of big fish. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we have a ton of members who, who fish from shore. Again, same thing. Um, we both, you know, we, we paddle fish. We have a lot of members who fish like kayaks. Again, same thing. You can catch some giant fish without having a motor at all. Just a paddle craft or just some wading boots. So don't do it just to go catch fish because it's really about if, if you really want to catch more fish, it's learn the fish behaviors, predict where they're going to be. And then all you have to do is just find spots that you can access either by foot or by or by paddle so uh, one of the biggest mistakes i've heard is oh man i bought this boat i thought it would help me catch more fish and i'm not catching any more fish actually when i got my first boat i went from fishing out from a kayak i was used to a kayak i was very i was getting very consistent over in melbourne at where i just moved and i bought a little skiff and my fish catching went down significantly when i got that skiff because now i had just more stuff to worry about i'd have the motor breaking down and and you know my fishing day was now um was not composed of, of trying to get back to the ramp <laughs> with the bum motor and uh, and just the whole slap there's just a, there's it's, it's not like oh if only uh, you know they're only catching fish or they're catching fish because they have that boat and i don't that's not going to be the case at all it's, it's learn learn the fish you know focus on on understanding the fish behavior before you ever by uh, by the boat to help out for that so yeah, which is what we teach in the salt strong insider club and now have some really cool software that actually tells you and predicts what will be the best days and the time of day uh, really really cool we had a call today with our, our head developer nick and oh my gosh dude how awesome is that uh, i mean next this level. is next level in terms of using everything from wind and the radar and the sonar so you're getting to like have these maps overlay and map out your um, map out your trips on where you're going. Uh, it it is epic, and you can literally see like the waves and and, and the depths everywhere you're going. And it's it, it's like a predictive analysis stuff. It is next level. Like I was kind of on the fence about because we already teased that we have some of the stuff coming that's going to help predict. Like I mean, next level. Like even better than having like a guide on speed dial. Next level. And I was like, maybe maybe we'll raise the price of the inside club. Not for current members, by the way. Just for anyone coming in new. And after I saw that today with Nick, I was like, all right, yeah, it's, it's gotta happen. Uh, yep. This is just so cool. And it is costing us a fortune to build all this stuff. Uh, it is so, so, so cool. So get in and now while you can, once you're in, you're locked in for life. So that is our promise as an insider member is once you're in on uh, you know, the, the annual plan there, or a, a th occasionally we have the monthly plan, you're much better. You save like 60% by going annual and just paying up front, but you'll be locked in for life, even if we raise the price. So definitely check that out at saltstrong.com inside a club. Uh, you know, today, speaking of like the advantage of a kayak, right? It was super low tide. We wanted to get back in this one area. We we're having to like sit there and putz around all day. Uh, to wait for a little bit more water flow and man how we had kayaks we could have been back there crushing them and and we were so shallow when we got back to that one spot where we saw how many redfish you think we saw this morning there was a lot yeah it was uh man. it was oh, the there were a lot of redfish spooking away from us so right. we should say. <laughs> and i would say may, not whole slap but i mean the troll motor was super loud for how shallow we were and we're having to adjust it because it was like getting close to the bottom like we were just way too noisy for how shallow it was and those fish they all spooked out had we been in a kayak we could have seen them and gosh we could have just sat there and waited to them uh ah oh, man it was it's so cool to see them and i love seeing fish but i really love catching them win some you lose some we uh yeah. we, we lost them we lost today yeah but that was a good example that the the boat actually probably hurt us in uh in that case and had we been in a bigger boat, 
uh, we never would have got back there in the first place. We would have been sitting there picking our nose on the outside. So, yep. But I'll be, I'll be, I'll be curious to see what the comment feed is. Um, yeah. Which is about the the Bodie market. It's uh, it's been it's been pretty wild, and uh, it's been going on for a while too. And and it very well could continue. It very well could totally stop. I have no clue. So, time will tell. All we can do is make a guess at it. Yep. So let us know. We um, obviously we put this on the tube, meaning YouTube. But the main place where we get to see every comment because it comes to us via email is over at saltstrong.com in the fishing tips section. You will see this actual podcast. And the very bottom, there's a little place to comment. And uh, obviously, if you remember, it'll, it'll say that and have you already hopefully logged in. And and uh, we'll we'll usually try to respond to every single one. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. But love to hear your feedback. And if you happen to be in the boating industry, love love your candid thoughts. Anything we missed, I'm sure there are there are many things. And if you're a financial advisor, you know a whole lot more than me about inverted yield curves. Give us some of your your tidbits on that. We can all learn from on this podcast. A lot to learn from. Anything else, Luke? I think we covered as much as we could. Well, let's go boat shopping. Ready? Let's do it. All right. Hey. All right, everybody. Appreciate you big time. And if you're not an insider member, what the heck are you waiting on? Jeez Louise, $1.87 per week now is what it boils down to, or $0.27 cents per day. You can't even find a cup of coffee for $0.27 cents per day. Become a better angler, guaranteed, and save money on your tackle. That's all at saltstrong.com. For you current members, we appreciate you big time, and make sure to get in the community. We're doing some cool giveaways. Uh, gave away a Toadfish Travel Rod, a BG, a Daiwa BGMQ, and now have a new giveaway uh, for this, uh, this coming month is, uh, as well. And, uh, and also did a little giveaway for a free fishing trip with Luke and myself. So a lot of cool things and cool perks, cool things that uh, we love to do to reward our members who are active in the community. That's at community.saltstrong.com. Otherwise, we appreciate you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, we will talk to you in the next episode. Peace. We out. Woo, woo. See ya.